And alright guys, you're probably wondering what's up with the title and why I'm calling this Apple's weirdest MacBook. There are plenty of reasons, but I'll get into that in a second. First, let's talk a bit about what you get here. This is Apple's thinnest and lightest MacBook to date, and it's a gorgeous piece of hardware, and I doubt anyone, Apple lover or not, can disagree with that. It comes in three different colors, which is new to the world of Apple laptops, and you're able to choose between the new space gray version that I've got here, as well as a gold and silver option, and the silver is basically the same as every other MacBook. These are the same colors you can choose between with iPhones and iPads, so if you're into matching, you'll be able to do that. I'm not gonna bore you with the exact dimensions of how thin this is, but trust me, it's stupid thin. We're now starting to see laptops into the same portability range as tablets. And I think this is probably the biggest feature when it comes to the 12 inch MacBook. To be honest, on paper, I thought this was a terrible machine. It doesn't have great specs. And even as a device that I didn't plan to do any video or photo editing on, I still expected more, especially considering the $1,300 price tag. You can easily get a more powerful MacBook Air for less and that's saying a lot. Not only does this have lackluster specs, but it only has one port. Yes, you heard me correctly, one port. Not to mention it's USB Type-C. While it's great to see the adoption of new tech like USB Type-C, which is faster and more versatile than the current USB options, you'll need an adapter for any of your devices if they aren't USB Type-C compatible. And chances are none of the devices you own are compatible yet. I also feel like there should be a minimum of two USB ports on a laptop. One of the biggest flaws with the MacBook is that the single USB port is also used to charge it. That means while it's charging, you won't be able to use any external devices with it, unless you of course buy an adapter. I'm not sure if this is an issue of being a first gen product or greed on Apple's end. This means you won't find any display ports, SD card slots or any other port you might come to expect on a standard laptop. Not to mention, this thing is packing a 480p webcam, which is quite shocking. I'm not even sure why Apple still makes these kinds of cameras, considering every other product Apple sells has something better. I also wasn't too impressed with the typing experience, and I've been using this for quite some time now, so I'm not sure if it's something I'll really get used to. Personally, I prefer keys with a little more height, as I find them to be more tactile and satisfying to type on. With these, I never really get the sense that I'm pressing the keys. With this MacBook, you'll also get the new Force Touch trackpad, which feels surprisingly similar to the normal version with some additional features like being able to fast forward through videos faster depending on how much pressure you put on the pad. Now, I've been coming down pretty hard on this MacBook, but the weirdest thing about it is that I'm insanely drawn to using it. While it has plenty of drawbacks, there are some really nice things about it as well. As I mentioned, this thing is gorgeous and I'm a sucker for it in space gray. It also has a retina display so you get a pretty crisp screen with some nice room to work with even though it's only a 12 inch display. And of course, the insane portability. It's so easy for me to grab this and go without much compromise in terms of functionality. As I mentioned before, the portability rivals that of a tablet but with this, you'll get much more functionality than a tablet offers. This is the feeling you're supposed to get with something like the Surface Pro 3, but I find that this does a much better job at it. It feels like a laptop, but also feels as portable as a tablet with a less awkward keyboard solution than the Surface currently offers. It also has pretty great battery life, which is surprising with this super thin design and all, but the engineers over at Apple really pulled off something amazing because the battery life competes with that of any of the other MacBooks. Another surprisingly great feature of the new MacBook is its speakers. I have no idea how such a small laptop can produce such great sound. The speakers are so loud, it's comparable to the stereo speakers on my 15 inch MacBook. It's definitely not something I was expecting, but I'm happy they perform so well. And this is why I find this to be the weirdest Apple laptop yet. It's pretty underwhelming in terms of what it provides, but its amazing design has caused me to fall in love with it due to its ease of use. This is definitely geared towards the constant traveler or the student who doesn't want to carry much to class. It's a great note taking and web browsing device. And if those are your main reasons for using a laptop, this could work pretty well for you. But when it comes to recommendations, I can't wholeheartedly recommend it because I know how much it lacks. I'm hoping that Apple addresses most of the issues like the single USB port, bad webcam, weak processor, and the steep price tag in the next version of this MacBook. And that wraps it up for my review of the 12 inch Retina MacBook, which I'm dubbing Apple's weirdest laptop yet, because it manages to suck, 
but still makes me want to use it. Now, Apple has been pretty innovative with the designs of the new MacBook, but there are some other companies working on some pretty innovative products as well. And one of those products is here, a pair of wireless buds that gives you full control of what you hear and how you hear it through the use of an app. I got a chance to go to Doppler Labs and check out the here in person, and I've gotta say, this is pretty amazing. These buds literally allow you to control the volume of the world around you and even gives you the ability to enhance or tune out certain frequencies depending on the situation you're in. So from crying babies on a plane to the sound of the subway, you get to pick what your ears are subjected to. And if that's not cool enough, the carrying case is also used to charge this thing while you're on the go. It's no surprise their Kickstarter has blown up and if you guys want to be amongst the first to grab a pair or learn more, definitely check the links down below. And I don't know about you guys, but it's been a while since I've seen something this innovative, and when it comes out, it's definitely something I wanna get my hands on. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know what you guys think of the new MacBook, and be the cool guy that gives this video a thumbs up, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Till then, it's your average consumer. Peace. And this is why I find this to be the weirdest Apple laptop yet. It's pretty underwhelming in terms of what it provides, but its amazing design has caused me to fall in love with it due to its ease of use. This is definitely geared towards the constant traveler or the student who doesn't want to carry much to class. It's a great note-taking and web browsing device, and if those are your main reasons for using a laptop, this could work pretty well for you. But when it comes to recommendations, I can't wholeheartedly recommend it because I know how much it lacks. I'm hoping that Apple addresses most of the issues like the single USB port, bad webcam, weak processor, and the steep price tag in the next version of this MacBook. And that wraps it up for my review of the 12 inch Retina MacBook, which I'm dubbing Apple's weirdest laptop yet because it manages to suck but still makes me want to use it. Now, Apple has been pretty innovative with the designs of the new MacBook, but there are some other companies working on some pretty innovative products as well. And one of those products is here, a pair of wireless buds that gives you full control of what you hear and how you hear it through the use of an app. I got a chance to go to Doppler Labs and check out the here in person, and I've gotta say, this is pretty amazing. These buds literally allow you to control the volume of the world around you and even gives you the ability to enhance or tune out certain frequencies depending on the situation you're in. So from crying babies on a plane to the sound of the subway, you get to pick what your ears are subjected to. And if that's not cool enough, the carrying case is also used to charge this thing while you're on the go. It's no surprise their Kickstarter has blown up, and if you guys want to be amongst the first to grab a pair or learn more, definitely check the links down below. And I don't know about you guys, but it's been a while since I've seen something this innovative, and when it comes out, it's definitely something I want to get my hands on. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know what you guys think of the new MacBook, and be the cool guy that gives this video a thumbs up, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Till then, it's your average consumer. Peace.